Well, this is different. So, The Crow, City of Angels. It's a movie tie-in, which is never a good sign. Worse still, it's, it's not even based on the good movie from the series. It's based on the moderately pish sequel, The Crow, City of Angels. And that's only worth watching for, well, Iggy Pop's in it, Enduri's in it, the Deftones are in it, and occasionally you get to go, hey, isn't that the Yellow Power Ranger? And it was. Now, I could lay into this game's rubbish background, it's awkward animations, it's even more awkward voice acting. But, uh, that would be too easy, too obvious. Besides, there are two major problems with this game. Problems that make it more or less impossible to actually play. For all intents and purposes, this is a scroll and beat em up like Streets of Rage. You go to an area, you batter everyone there, and then you move to the next area. It's a simple premise, one that's served as well for, for years. But remember those two problems I talked about with this game? Well, this game makes it massively difficult to beat anybody up or move to a new area. City of Angels controls more or less like the original Resident Evil. You've got a pre-rendered 2D background and when you move to a certain point the background changes to represent a new area, like a different part of a room or moving along a street. In theory this is fine. In practice, you have to make sure that when you move between screens, everything makes sense. As a player, you need to be able to link the screens together, so you can say, okay, I was here, and now I'm here. You should be able to build up a mental picture of the place that you're meant to be. For example, if I decide to get up and go get a can of juice, I'll get up, I'll go that way towards the kitchen, and you'd maybe expect the next shot to be of me standing beside this couch, right? Let me just get my sound thing. No, not so fast, says City of Angels. See the layout of the backgrounds and also where you change between them is so poorly thought out that you have no idea at any given moment where the hell you are. It's, it's like being the main character in Memento. Every five minutes, you've got to reorient yourself going, right, where am I? Who am I? I don't actually remember what I even came in here for. So this game, like Resident Evil, uses 2D backgrounds, and how you get about those is using something called tank controls. Basically, you can move forward, you can move back, you can turn left, you can turn right, and that's about it. Tank controls are slow, and not very precise. They don't allow for fluid movement or quick reactions. I'll put this another way. I have no idea who the hell thought that tank controls were a good idea for a fighting game. Don't just take my word for it though, thanks to this shiny new house, I've got a wee patio outside so we are going to test whether tank controls are actually effective in any fucking way in a combat situation. Let me just drop a sound set oh, fucking wires, right, let's go. How the fuck am I in a bedroom? You can probably guess what that leads to. Uh, you lose a lot and you die a lot, even though your character is meant to be immortal. Uh, which brings us to this cheery screen. I'm sorry, Dad. Now we can never be together. You must remain here forever. Why send his son to tell him that? 
Like, why sit this kid down if you're in charge of the afterlife and being, so you're never going to see your dad again, uh, you're going to be separated for all of time and all of eternity, and it's because he's a failure and probably didn't love you enough. So yeah, never going to see him again. Go tell him. I mean, there's, there's other things in this game that don't make sense, like having a life bar for a character that's meant to be immortal and impervious to damage, but the big problem is that instead of fighting bad guys, you just fight with the game itself, and you lose every single time. I really hope this is actually my house.